Dinobolt. They should be okay. 12 mil. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. Six, you reckon? And um, put three along there into the retaining wall. Got three left over. Maybe I'll use these as well. Um, why the hell not? Um, yeah, I'll keep going. I think. Um, let's put one more there. Let's put another one, maybe here, and let's put one here. It's almost one in every in every um, cavity. That'll be that'll be enough. That's heaps. There we go, joist hangers attached. I don't normally put the joist hangers on when the bearer is you know, resting flat like that. I normally wait until it's actually on the wall or wherever I'm putting it. But um, oh, it just seemed really easy doing it that way, so I did. But uh, now I have to attach that bearer to that concrete wall. So, hmm, all right, leave it with me. I'll do that right now. 
All right, it's the following morning. It's the following morning, I haven't done anything. Uh, basically all I did was, um, after I put those saddles on, I just dropped the, the bearer down to the floor, down to the ground. It's just propped up off the concrete by a couple of pieces of framing pine. Now I stuck the joist in, I just wanted to see what it looked like and I basically spaced them out at this end. I just wanted to see, looks good. Uh, so now, um, last night, what I did last night is I worked out exactly what the overhang needs to be. What I'm gonna use, uh, first of all, is going to change. Um, that was the thing, that's the problem with this kind of method is you just don't know um, if the overhang that you're cutting this thing down to is going to be right. Listen, I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> if we come down, have a look at this kind of little diagram. You can see this first curve line, that represents the very front of the riser. That's the lip, the overhang lip. Now if you have a look at this um, dotted line, basically that is um, the fascia. That's basically the vertical. If you're looking at it front on, that's the carpeted part. You can see it's a vertical, the wall of the riser. So this basically is the lip, that's the overhang. Now I've worked out that my overhang is going to be, what I'm gonna use initially is 80 mil, 85 mil. Now that sounds excessive, but that will change, that will get smaller. Um, and you're wondering how can that be smaller if you cut it down? Well, I've come up with this method where I can actually extend this dotted line, this fascia part out even more if I'd like to do that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. It's good to have that flexibility. That's the thing that I couldn't really work out until last night. But yeah, I spent a bit of time and I'm happy with that now. So yeah, there's just a bunch of other things that I have to take into account, like the supports at this end. Where do they have to be? They have to be a certain position and so forth. Because I do need to have carpet stripping. If I'm gonna have the carpet come underneath this um, riser, if I'm gonna have, like I said in the very first part, if I'm gonna have the carpet come underneath, I have to have the carpet stripping down there, etc. So, yeah, I think I've worked it out quite well. I'm just gonna go with what I know. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually, I'm like 90% sure I'm going back to the original template that I used, that I made. I like the curve a lot more, that one that you see down there, that black line. Um, yeah, I like it a lot more. The other one, like I keep saying, is too straight at the end, even though it fits the, the chairs better. But the thing is, I actually made that black one to fit the chairs anyway, so it's not far off. And I can keep saying, I'm not gonna hold on to these chairs for much longer, so why would I actually make the, you know, this curve fit this perfectly, etc. and I'm not happy with it. So I'm gonna make what I'm happy with, and I reckon that'll do us. Um, but the thing is, I can actually tweak this later now that I've got this method of um, um, basically making my fascia longer. But um, anyway, um, yeah, it's all trial and error. You know, you have to do it this way because the lights have to be a certain, you know, distance from the, the, the fascia of the, the riser. You don't know how much glow they're gonna show up. Yeah, it, it's just a, you have to do it as you go. So you just have to make compromises. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start doing this now. So I don't know if I'll show you me, because <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the um, template out. I'm gonna put this all back together and just double check that I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna go. All right, see you in the next scene.
Okay, finally, got it down. I have my curve marked on my concrete. This is basically the front, the shape of my riser at the front. It kind of looks pretty curvy, but it's at the same time, it's subtle as well. So um, I like it. I definitely like it more than I like the other one, um, the one that I adjusted to the seats. Although this curve here is basic, was basically made to the seats as well. So it was only a, you know, a slight change that I'd made. Now that middle one, you can see there, I've crossed that out. That's not supposed to be there. So just to show you what I've done here, this straight line that you can see there, the straight line, that's basically my two meter mark from the retaining wall, which basically means um, if I ever want to cut this back um, to, uh, you know, to make it into a, a straight um, riser, straight across like most others, all I need to do is basically cut along that line, <laughs> virtually, yeah. Um, I'm going to space my supports back a little bit from that line so that, yeah, I don't even have to move my legs that are holding the joists up. So I've got it all in my head. Okay, now this front line here, this front is the front edge of the, the riser, so you can't, <laughs> that's the very end of the riser. And this line here, that is basically the face fascia. So if you're looking on it, you know, that's the part that's carpeted, the vertical part. So this bit here is 80 mil, and that is the basically the overhang, which, like I mentioned before, will be reduced um, when I put my lighting in and, and work it all out properly, uh, like I said, I'm going to make I'm going to make it so that I can adjust the uh, the fascia of this riser. So that's a cool thing. But uh, there you go. Anyway, I'm going to get stuck into this. I just went to the dump just before I started marking this out, and I found all of this really cool brand new yellow tongue flooring. I got 4.8 meters, so that was a good score. That's definitely going to be used on this riser whether it's going to be as flooring or I could even use it as, um, you know, the steps. I might make my steps out of it. Who knows? But uh, yeah, cool, eh? All right, get back into it. Let's cut us some noggins. All right, so I've decided I'm just going to cut my noggins out with this, um, out of this LVL or laminated beam. Found that at the dump. I've got two more left. I'd rather use those up than actually cut that pristine bit of pine that's over there. I'm going to return that because I'll get $70 for that, and uh, $70 will pay for two three meter, 3.6 meter long sheets of flooring. So I'd rather have the flooring. I don't need them anymore. In fact, this one that's on the ladder here, that's already been cut and I am going to use that to do the end supports for my joist to keep them propped up off the concrete. But cool, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut our noggins out with that. But did you see this? Look at that. I've got another drop saw in the yard with another, you know, stand. I found this last night at the dump. Check it out. And um, I'm fixing it now. In fact, I'm doing another video at the moment where I'm fixing this thing. Um, it's a cool it's a cool drop saw. I mean, I've never seen anything quite like it. I love the paint job on it. Um, it's worth over $500. And I love it to death. It's excellent. Um, so all it needs, um, I just tried to turn it on. Like I said, I'm making a video where I'm 
you know, trying to see if this works, and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna fix it. Well, it just needs a new carbon brush. There you go in there. It was worn right down to the nub, and that's why it was just working sporadically. The one on this side is okay, but I'll replace both of them. So I was gonna actually, you know, cut my noggins out with this. I thought, I thought that it might work. I had a good feeling it might work but it doesn't. And the reason I thought it might work is because the same guy that threw that out obviously threw this out because this was sitting right next to it. Check this out. It's like a $1,175 saw bench. It's a Hitachi and it works perfectly. I've already turned this on and we will be using this to cut out you know, some of our angled curve bits that we need for our riser later on in this video. So I'm really happy with this. In fact, I have two saw benches already. One's a Triton Work Center 2000, incredibly heavy and bulky. I'm getting rid of that and I'm gonna replace it with this. The other saw bench that I have is an Ozito and it's actually quite cool, but it's lightweight and cheap. So I'm just gonna use this and that will free up some space. But for now, we're gonna be using old Trustworthy here, my Makita. We're gonna cut our noggins and get into this riser. Sweet! So we have our noggins in there. So that's awesome. So each one of these joists should be perfectly spaced basically at the front here. And uh, that's what we want. So what I want to do now is actually I need to cut these joists basically so that they run in the same angle as this line on the concrete. So how I'm going to do that is, let me just park you here for a second. If I get my get my square, place it on top. Look at this, it's pretty good length, it's excellent. I just put it there and then do that on that side. Now we want to make it so that it's in line, it's running with this back line, remember that's where our fascia is. This part here is just overhang. So we want to make our joist basically the same length as this. Okay. I'll do it on the back side as well. And then I am just gonna mark, I'm just gonna join this up. Alright, so there you go. So that's where I need to cut. I need to cut this down. Be there so that's the angle that we need to set out. I didn't realize I can actually use my drop saw to cut that so that's a cool thing. I was going to use that bench saw, that table bench, that Hitachi that I just found. But no. So I'm just going to go through and do that with all of these. I'll set you up, I'll do one more with you. Now the other thing that I'm doing as well is I'm making sure that each one of these joists, even though this hasn't been lifted up yet, right, I'm just doing this on the ground because I have to do it while it's close to the um, um, the line there. 
So I have to make sure that each one of these joists is level, like I've leveled that one, which means I just, I'm just putting a bit of packing underneath each one just to make it level. But, um, cool, I'll just keep plodding along. I'll let you watch me do a bit. I'm running out of battery actually, so. just like that. So you can see on the ends of these joists we now have a cut line so we know exactly how long to make these joists and at what angle we want to do it at. So I'm gonna take these out to the drop saw. I'm gonna, it's gonna be a bit time consuming and monotonous but I'll get there. Um, cut these down and then once that's all done we will be ready to raise this, bolt the, the bearer to the back wall, and um, yeah, do the front supports, and then we're home and hose, that's basically almost done. Then we just have to put the flooring on. I have to do this really quickly because my mate wants his projector back. I have to take it around to his house in two days time, and to be honest, it's gonna be really difficult to get up there to pull it down if this isn't done, you know, done. But um, yeah, anyway, I'll get into it, get onto it. <laughs> and get the scene finished.
you go. It turns out I could use my drop saw after all. And um, yeah, look at them. These are all, this is them all stacked up. You can actually see the curve quite nicely. We've got a nice curve happening. Um, you can see the end ones, that one there and that one over there. I've actually made a centimetre shorter and I did that because I'm thinking ahead and I plan on putting like a fascia with carpet on it and I reckon um, at the ends of that fascia I'm going to be curling the carpet around to the other side. So um, that's just so that, um, yeah, because I'm going to have, it's going to be thicker at the end of that part of the fascia at each end. So I thought I'd make that a little bit um, shorter to take out that carpet. But uh, it looks good. Just there, we got the off-cut pieces. But, um, oh man, I'm so happy that's out of the way. Pretty happy with that. Um, what I was thinking about doing, like you can, if you run your hand along, they're all out by maybe half a mil. Some of them are perf. I was thinking about even sanding them all back while they were like this. But um, no, I don't think so. I'll just use them as is. I'm sure everything's going to be fine. Now, finally, we are up to <laughs> we are up to putting that back bearer and the side one on the on the wall. I won't be doing that until tomorrow, but um, yeah, at least tomorrow I think I'll get everything. Oh, you know, as long as I get it to the stage where the joists are up. Um, the supports are on and I can throw some flooring there because I have to get my mate's projector down <laughs> but um, I think tomorrow will probably um, be looking good. It's amazing I thought I'd get all this knocked over in a day. It's been about three so far. I'm working slow though and I'm doing a lot of other stuff for other people in between but um, there you go and making other videos in between as well for other you know things like drop saws and other stuff that I find. So there we go, well we'll wait for tomorrow and see how we go and we'll continue this video then. Hey listen, before we go any further I just want to show you something. Um, with my cinema, like most people know, um, I'm building this and one of the objectives is I'm trying to see if I can use how much you know used stuff, stuff that people throw away. A lot of my timbers, uh, probably so far the majority of my timber has come from the tip um, a lot of my equipment that I'm using, projectors, receivers, speakers, really good speakers, etc. They've come from the tip. Even my home theatre chairs, they're all from the tip. Not all of them, but uh, most, uh, half of them. And yeah, so it's been a really cool thing. I've, I've been doing quite well as far as what I've been getting for this cinema. Now the other thing that I'm trying to kind of accomplish as well is not just those things, I want to use the majority of the tools um, that I use to build this thing. Basically every single tool that I've used, I think, has come from the dump. And I want to show you this thing here. Um, it was a couple of years ago and I was at the timber section and I noticed the corner of this this box, it was poking out. They dumped it at the timber section and um, they just piled a bunch of timber over the top. I pulled it out and I opened it up and this is what I found. that out it's like a Bosch rotary hammer drill it's got two batteries and it's got the charger even and um, I brought it home and it didn't work um, do you know what it was <laughs> what I had to do to fix it I think I spent 10 bucks and I had to buy some carbon brushes and I installed them in there myself and it's been a great little it's not a little thing it's actually been a great um, rotary drill I keep forgetting that I've got it but um, when I'm you know, need to kind of go through concrete and so forth. I always pull it out and it's been fantastic. I thought I'd show you that because it's a really cool find. Um, I'll be using that on the retaining wall basically now I reckon to put these diner bolts in. So anyway, let's get started. I really just wanted to show you that because it's worth a mention.
Hey, what do you think? One step further, one step closer I should say. It looks amazing. It's really, really coming along. Um, I've got a bit of tweaking to do. I have to make sure that they're directly over the edge, front edge is directly over that, that curve, that first curve. And uh, then I need to screw it into the saddles at the moment I can tweak it, I can move it back and forth. Um, and once that's done, I will actually put the noggins in. In fact, I think I might actually get this, I'll get all these front pieces, just get them centered. I mean, just get them all positioned perfectly and then put the, um, uh, the noggins in and I'll basically put them in the, the joist hangers, screw them into the joist hangers later, uh, maybe tomorrow. I really want to put a bit of flooring on it, just some of that temporary flooring that I've got so I can kind of put some seats on here and maybe get to that projector tomorrow.
righty. So we are up to our noggins. I need to put some noggins in between each floor joist. Actually, there's one there. They've all been cut to the right width, but um, now what I want to do is rip them down. At the moment, they are 200 mil this way, high, I guess you could say. I want to make them 150, because what I'm planning on doing initially is using this as storage, this riser. It's going to have a removable front face. So I think, basically, if I want to slide stuff up each channel, if this noggin is, you know, 200, it's just going to get in the way of whatever I slide up. So if I cut it back, at least that's going to give me a bit more room inside. And what I thought we'd do is maybe try out my new saw bench. The one I found at the dump the other day, it's all set up to 150. I've got a few of those noggins out there, so let's give that a go. This is actually quite exciting. I like trying to use stuff for the first time. Let me just put you here. That should be good enough, I think. Got my push stick, that's locked in. I can't find my um, my good glasses and headset, no, headphones, but these will be fine. Just want to make sure that the blade, yeah, the blade's not high enough. So I'll just lift the blade up by turning this this bit here. Excellent, that should do it. What do you think? Man, that works great. That works so well. I mean, yeah, I mean, that um, actually works a lot better than my other saw benches. In fact, I'm gonna chock this end of the bench up. That's, that's a bit better. Before I go any further, I just wanna take this in and have a quick look. Make sure that's looking okay. Okay, so this would normally be in the center of the joist, but just for now, I just want to see. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be enough. It just gives me that extra bit of, you know, um, room to slide things in, you know. So I think 150 is going to be good. This is number two. So I will put that there. All right, let's do the rest. Might just find something else to chalk that up with. Wow, that made light work of all of that stuff. That's pretty thick stuff. That's 50 mil thick LVLs. That really sliced through them. Man, this is better than the other two drop saw, uh, saw benches that I have, that's for sure. So this is a keeper. I'm definitely keeping this one. I'm just gonna wind this blade down a little bit. And I'll tell you what, gee, it makes a difference when your blade is sharp. I'm pretty. 
like the only thing I had to do with this saw bench was basically put my foot on this corner to stop it from lifting as I push this really heavy weight timber through. Um, most of the stuff that I'll be cutting will be MDF and pl uh, ply and so forth, but man, that's amazing. <laughs> that's a really good find. Thank you to whoever threw that out. I will use it and think of you. So there you go, all there. So I'm gonna take that inside and start screwing it in. There we go, noggins in, held in by very strong batten screws. And I'll tell you what, this structure is now so solid, it is 10 times as, yeah, there's no, there's no wobble or flex in it at all. I can kind of walk along these joists and feel incredibly safe. So that's a good thing. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and see my mate next door, see if he can give me a hand to pull these sheets of flooring that have been on my car roof racks wrapped in a tarp for the past two nights. Let's see if you can help me walk them in. I'll probably put most of them on the carpet, but we'll see if we can get three or four sheets on this riser. I don't think I'm gonna, you know, cut them and screw them in place straight away. Um, I'll take my time doing that, but at least I can get them in here and at least I can get something on here so I can walk on it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> 